Hi, I'm Brian Karam with Playboy Magazine. Join me today as I take you on a trip to the White House, give you a view inside the White House. <laughs> Welcome back. Um... And teach you how to just ask the question. <laughs> For the record, nothing says we're back to normal more than dueling protests outside of the White House on Lafayette Park. You notice six months after Biden has taken office, he finally brought down the 10 foot tall fences and lo and behold, you now see tourists once again walking in front of the White House. Over here, the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. In many ways, DC is quickly, or after six months, returning to normal. Back to normal, of course, means that uh, the television booths are in full operation. And if you look closely down there at the end of that frame, that's the West Wing, and standing out front is a Marine, which means this early in the morning, the president is actually in his office. Quite the difference from the previous administration. Seriously. And of course, now welcome to the theater of the absurd production of the White House. Another day, another briefing. <laughs> what are all these people doing in my room? I'm telling you. Never forget the offices where we do all our work or the Tom Hank Memorial espresso machine. Ah, the wonderful kitchen where preset Ed is always in the house. Just everyone should know that officially behind that door, people are geeking out over Olivia Rodrigo. How do you like the shades? I found them in the uh, Oval Office. Think they'll let me keep them? <laughs> Just kidding. So I have a special guest with me today. Uh, joining us in the briefing room is actress and multi-platinum recording singer-songwriter Olivia Rodrigo, who traversed red lights and stop times to see us. If you know her music, you'll get that dad jokes there. I am beyond honored and humbled to be here today to help spread the message about the importance of youth vaccination. Uh, I'm in awe of the work President Biden and Dr. Fauci have done and was happy to help lend my support to this important initiative. It's important to have conversations with friends and family members, encouraging all communities to get vaccinated and actually get to a vaccination site, which you can do more easily than ever before, given how many sites we have and how easy it is to find them at vaccines.gov. Thank you, Jen, for having me today. Uh, and thank you all for helping share this important message. It's so appreciated. Thank you. So, you know, there was a lot to ask today. Three questions on Olivia Rodrigo. Tell us more about uh, Olivia Rodrigo's visit here today. What is it that Olivia Rodrigo is tasked with while she's here? But not one question was asked about inflation. I, I take that back. I asked it at the end when she walked away after not calling on me and I got no answer. Have a great day. Uh, can't wait to talk to you tomorrow, Brian. I'd love if you just follow me. I ask the questions. There's also no uh, questions about Jeff Flake, who's now the been nominated for the diplomatic post in Turkey. But again, we certainly know all about Olivia Rodrigo. We need to step up our game. You could blame it on the administration, and sure, some of it is, but most of it is because we don't ask the questions that people want answered. Ah, the infamous governor's pool spray. The governors are meeting with the president, and the pool will go in, take pictures, ask questions, be yelled at, and then tell the leave. Yeah. Waiting at the sticks for the governors to come out and speak to us, but uh, they're about to get rained on, so the cameras are breaking down. We just met with the uh, president and vice president. We had a I think a robust conversation about what, what the art of what is possible to get this bipartisan infrastructure package done. This bipartisan bill, by the way, and, I, and having you know, talked to many of you about it, uh, it deals with some of the people who are actually traditionally Republican voters, some of the people in the rural areas who need water, who need why, why is there a disconnect? Why didn't they understand that, that infrastructure will help out the disaffected the most in your experience? 
Well, I think the people in communities know they need this. It's a very popular action. So it's not, it's, let's be clear, it's not bipartisan in Ohio. It's not bipartisan across the country. It's only by, not bipartisan in Washington, D.C., which we see an opportunity to actually bring the rest of the America, the rest of America to Washington, D.C., yeah. and get something passed that everybody really agrees on. So that's what we're calling on. We're calling on Congress to do what their, their folks want them to do and to pass this bill. And we can see a bipartisan route, which would be good for the democracy. It'd be good for the day-to-day -day lives of everyday Americans. It'd be good for our cities, good for building good paying jobs in our communities. That's what's happening. The point about some of the rural areas that don't have water and don't have roads and don't have broadband, don't right. have broadband, don't have you know, the electrical lines are questionable, specifically people on well water who are suffering through it. What, what was the outreach there, or did they reach up to you, or did you reach down to them? Well, I think we hear about it, and I'm open to other folks. I think we hear about it every single day from both in our cities, but in rural communities as well. That's our point. You know, everybody, I think, in America is ready for this infrastructure plan that, you know, as mayors we've been talking about for a decade now to get done. We see a bipartisan path. The president sees a bipartisan path. We think we can get this done, but we need to get it done now. Hey, yeah, Governor, real quick, real quick, can you talk a little bit about, you? I asked you about bipartisanship. Do you really think this could be a start for real bipartisan work? I do. I, I really, Why? I, because I think you, the, the, the Mayor Whaley said this, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step is that famous Confucian uh, yeah. quotas. Um, sure wasn't Mark Twain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this would be, first of all, it's a big deal in and of itself, but it's proof that, that you can find common ground. And With Republicans? President Biden, yeah, President Biden campaigned on that, he's tried to govern that way. I think he's doing it. Incredible job, but this would be a big deal with have you with seen legs. it? Have you seen it in the room with Republicans going, "Wow, we well, can work together"? The room with I was you. in was this one with, yeah. with Republicans, about evenly split between Democrats and Republicans, and there was a real spirit that this is a potentially big moment. So, can I ask for the? You're the Republican in the room <laughs> that came out. There's a couple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but do you really think this could be a start for real bipartisanship? Well, I think obviously the infrastructure itself. And what it does for our country is the is the primary purpose here. But I think there is a very important secondary purpose here in normalizing American politics a little bit and showing that we can do things on a bipartisan nature again. Um, I was talking to Ambassador Rice about she was discussing the strategic benefit of showing the world that the two parties can function. You know that we've got to show that America because that's uh, is contrary to the to the message that some are preaching on both. You know specifically from the Republican Party. Well, we, we have got to show and overcome the dysfunctionality that has been too often the trademark of American politics the last few years. So I do think it's not the main purpose for anybody, but I think there is something um, that you're getting at with your question that is very real here and very attainable that would set a tone for a more normal politics here in America as we move forward. We used to do things like this on 99 nothing votes in the U.S. Senate, you know? No kidding. <laughs> We need, we, we're not going to get there on this bill, but we could get a little bit closer than we've been getting lately. And I think that's good for America beyond just the benefits of the actual package. So there you have it. Another day at the White House, a press pool spray, a protest, and a press briefing. And of course, the press didn't really do as good a job as we could have done. A lot of younger folks in the press, but we have a problem following each other on questions. It's kind of new. We were under COVID regulations and restrictions for about a year and a half. So getting everyone back in the press room has caused a few problems. Some people ask too many questions. Some don't get to ask any at all. But at the end of the day, we have to do better. Oh,